Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for coming out tonight for Rain Ready Rebate Program for Priority Areas. I always I love all those R's. Um, we appreciate you taking the time uh, to learn about this program. Um, I'm going to start off by um, doing a land acknowledgement. I wish to acknowledge that Ottawa is located on unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe Nation. I would like to honor the land of the peoples of the Algonquin Anishinaabe Nation, whose ancestors have lived on this territory for millennia and whose culture and presence have nurtured and continue to nurture this land. Thank you very much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pass it over to, to Simon, but I'm just gonna read off. I don't know if you're gonna do this anyway, Simon, but the priority areas in Bay Ward, just so people know, um, is uh, Carlingwood, Wood Park, Queensview Terrace North along the Pinecrest Creek Corridor, Whitehaven, Lincoln Heights, Labor Park, and Woodruff North. So those are the neighborhoods that are um, in the priority areas. Um, so I'll hand it over to you, Simon, and you'll have a map anyway, I'm sure, of uh, showing. Thank you. Simon is our, our staff person who is um, responsible for this uh, rebate program. Wonderful. Thank you, Councillor Kavanaugh. Um, thanks everyone for joining. It's really great to see people coming out on a, a weekday evening to learn about uh, our program here at the City of Ottawa. Um, it's something we're excited about. We are sort of in our second year of launching, so we've got a little bit of a track record now, um, but some room to grow, which I'll, uh, I'll tell you about uh, through my presentation. Um, Excuse me, Simon. Simon, I'm sorry to interrupt. The, the volume is not very good. And as soon as you turn your head a little bit, it kind of like goes away. I don't know if there's a way that you can improve that. Um, that's a good question. Oh, that, that was, was much better, volume, but, but don't different. don't move your head. <laughs> okay. My, my slides are to the side, but <laughs> I think when I start presenting, they'll be in front of me. Okay. So, um, <laughs> Uh, I'm Simon Greenlands Smith. I'm an outreach and communications coordinator in the climate change and resiliency team at the city. Um, I run Rain Ready Ottawa. So um, this is uh, the, the program for residents uh, to make important um, but small changes to their property uh, to improve stormwater management in our city. This has a lot of benefits for our city, but it has a lot of benefits for uh, individual homeowners and, and residents, um, especially in Bay Ward. Um, I will uh, share my slides if I am allowed to do that. Um, if I share that and then go into full screen, is that coming up correctly? Perfect. Okay, um, so I sort of alluded to this, but uh, the goal of Rain Ready Ottawa is to support Ottawa residents in making rainwater management improvements at home. Um, we have some specific objectives, and you'll see that this related to how we design the program. Simon, I'm sorry again to interrupt you. Could you get closer to your microphone, possibly? I'm in my headphones, so it oh. may just be malfunctioning. Um, so I'll go off of them. Okay. Uh, can you hear me now, Tony? Uh, yes, when you start, okay. you're good. Uh, I'll let you know. And if can Connie, can you say something so I can make sure that I'm hearing? Uh, can you? Can it? You seem like you start really loud and then it goes I'm low not and then it goes that. loud. So, um, give me one second. Okay, sorry everybody. We just want to make sure the sound is good so everybody can hear properly. Okay, we no longer have the uh, shared screen. Could someone uh, say something now and I'll try and respond? Councillor, do you want to say something? Okay. I, I, I can hear. Sorry. 
Uh, apologies for that. Um, I will try that one more time. Okay, um, so we have some specific objectives. <clears throat> um, one is to build capacity in the landscape um, industry. Um, and this is sort of to normalize some of the management and practices that we have for stormwater, things like rain gardens, things like uh, landscaping that is permeable rather than impermeable. So permeable being lawn and garden, or even better, something like a rain garden or a soak away net. Um, but specifically avoiding things like um, pavement. Um, we want to build homeowner awareness and skills. We want to encourage action in priority stormwater retrofit areas, which are the two or the three little pink areas in this map. But I've got some zoom ins for them. Um, and then importantly, we want to reduce the financial barriers for residents. Um, so uh, speaking to that, we have four main parts of Brain Ready Ottawa. One is an industry training program. This is something that um, landscapers in the in the Ottawa area can take. It's a training we run it every spring, uh, and then they have a certification. So they're just building the knowledge and the skills to implement these great projects. We have a home assessment program. So this is where residents can request a free um, home assessment, um, and someone comes to your property and uh, basically has a look around the outdoor area, sees where things are, are, are good and things, uh, places where uh, some improvements could be made. The home assessment program has been, has been really, really popular, um, partially because it's free, partially because it's filled with great advice. So I'll touch on that a little bit later. Um, and we've got uh, community engagement initiatives. Uh, we do a lot of outreach on social media and, and other, um, other mediums, uh, including the counselor's newsletter. That's been really helpful to us. And then um, all of those pieces of the program are sort of undergirded by design and installation incentives. And I'll go over exactly what those are um, in just a second. Like I said, the Fusion Landscape Professional Program is um, it's, uh, faces landscapers. So if you are in the industry, you should get in touch because you should take this training. Um, but if you're not, just know that there are lists of um, certified fusion landscape professionals, and they have the experience and the knowledge and the know-how to implement really great projects on your property. So if you're looking for landscape uh, experience and advice, um, but you are concerned about uh, rainwater or stormwater management, this is something that you'll, you'll want to uh, invest in. The home assessment program. Uh, provides free home assessments. They take about an hour. Um, they're filled with custom advice. And we run this program with a nonprofit partner, Enviro Center, which many of you may be familiar with. They run a lot of programs uh, on behalf of the city. And they hired this really great home assessor um, who uh, has conducted 115 home assessments last year. And we have 150 planned for this year. Um, you get a detailed report um, after the home assessment, so you know exactly sort of which um, tax you could take in improving rainwater management on your property. Um, but this program has been really um, successful in some ways, uh, but it's full for 2022, and there's a waiting list that is uh, very long. So we, we've managed a little work around, and I'll, man I'll uh, mention that um, towards the end of the presentation. And then we've got our design and installation incentives. So um, we, we incentivize four or five, depending on how you look at it, um, actions that you can take on your property. Um, and the first is downspout redirection. So this is a sort of low cost, high value uh, intervention that you can take. Um, and it's as simple for some people, it's as simple as moving your downspout from an area like driveway or patio um, and moving it towards a permeable surface like lawn or garden. 
Um, a lot of people drain to driveways, um, and that's understandable because people want to get this rainwater away from their foundation and away from their house, really. But this has unintended consequences, especially in the shoulder seasons when these areas ice up and can become hazards. Um, but if you do take the steps to properly drain away from your house, that's more than two meters into a permeable area, um, you can really solve a lot of problems um, without posing any risk to your without posing any risk to your basement. So that's one that we have put a lot of emphasis behind because we think it's really high value and it's not difficult to do. So we offer uh, up to a maximum of a thousand dollars and we offer um, rebates uh, up to 75% of your cost. So if you have to go to the home center and buy a bunch of extra tubing or uh, a bunch of gravel or a, a downspout extender, then that's something that you can make a claim to Rain Ready Ottawa for. Um, and you'll get 75% of that cost back. Um, rain gardens and soak away pits. These are um, elements that function similarly. They're places, they're installations that you can put in your lawn or your, your property that promote infiltration. So a rain garden is sort of a bowl shaped garden and it's filled with loose soil, it's covered with plants and mulch. So it can be a really attractive feature to your property. And what it's gonna do is take rainwater from your roof or even your driveway and just drive it down into the soil. So this mimics the natural um, processes that would have been happening before Ottawa was settled and it was forest and fields and, and sort of naturalized areas. But what we have with the, um, uh, the way that the urban space was built is roofs and driveways and roads. And so that's increasing the impermeability of the landscape. And what these um, elements seek to do is put some permeability back in the landscape because this prevents stormwater from running off fast and furious from our properties and roads. And that has impacts to uh, places like Pinecrest Creek and eventually the Ottawa River. The distinction between a rain garden and a soak away pit is a rain garden is topped with garden, um, native perennial plants, very beautiful, low maintenance, um, wonderful, wonderful things to have as part of your yard. I built a little pocket sized rain garden in, in my front garden and um, it's been performing great. It takes rainwater and just dries it down. So it's been great. And um, I'm ready to sort of give it the spring cleanup and my plants will be showing up um, fairly soon here. The soak away pit is different in that it's doing the same things underground. Typically it's a pit filled with stone or even an engineered product that looks a lot like milk crates, provides a place for the rainwater to go and sit when a rain event happens and then slowly infiltrates it into the ground, into the surrounding soil that's already there. The beauty of this is if you're short on space in your yard and you wanna have a play space for a dog or kids or anything like that, these can be topped with turf. So it stones underneath the surface um, and then you'll have like 12 inches of soil and then you can have turf or you can have garden there as well. Permeable pavements, I think are something that's generating a lot of attention right now. You may have seen on social media or, or uh, you know, TikTok things, like um, people pouring buckets of water over pavement and it just goes right through. Um, well, that's what permeable pavements are. So we offer incentives up to $5,000 um, for people to implement permeable pavements. The important part of permeable pavements are actually underneath the surface. So it acts a lot like a soak away pit with stones being a reservoir for um, rainwater to flow into and then percolate down through the uh, surrounding soil. Um, these are offered per meter squared or per square foot. And it's not gonna cover the full cost of the installation, but it is going to make the choice between a permeable pavement, which is more expensive than a conventional pavement, it'll even that out somewhat. It's still gonna be more expensive even with the rebates, but um, it's gonna help a lot of people make that leap to a more environmentally friendly choice. 
The last one is uh, certified landscape designs. So this relates to that piece of the program, uh, the fusion landscape professional program. If you hire a fusion landscape professional and you implement two of the uh, practices, there's some size requirements, you can get an extra $500 to help support the hiring of that um, fusion landscape professional. So that's sort of the, the photos there correspond to the different practices. Um, and we've seen uptake in all of these practices, which has been great. I think permeable pavements are generating a lot of um, interest right now, but I think the, the strength of that is when you pair them up. So people are doing downspout redirections, in some cases into the base of a permeable pavement driveway. And that's just a wonderful um, marriage of two practices because you can actually um, avoid the, reduce the runoff from your roof by using the permeable pavement and then it's permeable in itself. So it's sort of a double win. Um, this is what Ottawa's uh, sort of urban area looks like from an uh, eligibility perspective. Um, the Pinecrest Westboro Priority Retrofit Area, which rolls right off the tongue, that's the leftmost or westernmost um, patch there in dark gray. Um, and it covers a, a good chunk of Bay Ward. Um, and the counselor uh, mentioned the, the neighborhoods that are covered. Um, and then the other two patches are what we call the Eastern subwatersheds. Um, but there is an eligibility tool at our website where you can input your address and it just tells you, are you in priority? Yes or no. Are you in secondary areas, which are the lighter gray areas? Yes or no. Or are you outside those areas? So in the priority areas, uh, residents are eligible for rebates. Um, in and uh, the home assessment program. In the light gray and the secondary areas, it's just the home assessments that we offer. Um, so no rebates uh, for, for those areas. This is a little bit of a zoom in um, to the, you know, the area that will be relevant to Bay Ward residents. Uh, you can see it, it cuts off some of that area. Um, but there's a lot of houses in this area. There's 18,000 houses in this area. So I encourage everyone um, and their neighbors to uh, seek out that eligibility tool at our website um, and see if you're in that priority zone. Because together, um, small changes on people's properties can make a big difference. Can make a big difference to Pinecrest Creek, which you can see sort of coming up from Britannia there and snaking through along with the transit way. Um, yeah, we, we, there can be a big uh, impact if people take these small actions in a distributed manner. So we know that um, from, we know from engineering studies that uh, small actions, retrofits on private property can actually have a big impact on Pinecrest Creek and in turn the Ottawa uh, river. So I, I like to end with uh, sort of a photo uh, from the river's perspective um, and, and what it means to uh, a place that, that we value, which is the Ottawa River. Bay Ward is interesting because it's got patches where there are storm sewers, but it's certainly not everywhere. There are big swaths of it that have ditches, but it's not everywhere. So it's really a diverse um, area from a stormwater perspective. Um, but I think some of the uh, things that we recommend are actually well suited to um, all these different areas. So I'll, I'll jump in and go through some of the practices and, and, and the, the actions that can be taken um, on your own property. Um, and I'll start with rain gardens. I, I sort of went over this, but I think the benefits are curb appeal, um, these can be really, really beautiful areas filled with native perennial plants. Um, these tend to be low uh, maintenance plants to take care of. And they have uh, what we call co-benefits. So other environmental benefits like playing habitat to pollinators um, and learning opportunities for kids and community. When I put in my uh, little pocket-sized rain garden, I learned a lot, learned a lot about soils, learned a lot about plants. Um, and just 
the, uh, the hard work that it takes to dig up ages old concrete from your front yard. Um, I guess some people had ditched some bags of concrete down there. Um, so no wonder it wasn't draining well before I input the rain garden. Uh, there is some drawbacks. So there is some upkeep required, but this is not fundamentally different from a typical garden. And once they're established, it can be lower maintenance than a typical garden. So that's really a, a, a large benefit. Uh, soakways, again, these are sort of the engineered rain gardens. Um, you can see there, these, these fellows are, are inputting a soakaway pit, and it really does look like um, milk crates. So these are structures that'll provide some structural stability for anything you do on the top. You can walk around on it, no problem. Um, but it'll hold that void space for a lot of water in this case to enter that structure and then uh, percolate through over time. So for these, you do not get the uh, co-benefits of pollinator habitat um, or aesthetic benefits, uh, but I do know that lots of people appreciate the, the look of lawn and they want to keep it for a lot of reasons like pets and, and kids. And things like that. Downspout redirection. Um, really, this is a powerful tool for preventing your basement from getting wet. Um, I rent at my place, but uh, we took some time to make sure the downspouts were well away from our basement. Um, and you can see it in a matter of a day sometimes. When we have a big thaw in the, in the spring and that water is just trickling down right beside my house, I get a trickle through my basement. When I add that piece of pipe to draw it away from the house and it ends up on my lawn, it dries up in, in, a, in uh, not so long. So, um, you can also reduce tripping hazards um, and improve the overall permeability of your property, which is lovely. Uh, no drawbacks to this one if it's done correctly, um, but some, uh, you know, some things are a little bit harder than others. As you can see in this photo, that piece of pipe drains to a path or what looks like a path, um, and there's ways to, to solve. You can cut paths or pick up um, interlocking brick and install uh, channel gutters that you can buy from a, a home center like Home Depot or wherever you want to go. Um, but you can also use an arbor so you can go overhead instead by shortening the pipe and drawing it across your path and then uh, putting it down on the other side. Um, lots of cool redirection ideas. I think the dry creek beds are really uh, popular these days. Rain chains, which I do see increasingly around my neighborhood. Really neat idea. So instead of a boring downspout, you can have uh, something that just guides the water down in more of a natural way. These ones are little sort of uh, pots that would hold the water and just drip it down. Um, that can be a really neat thing. But the sky's the limit. This one's a cascade of some old wood drums, which uh, provides a really nice look to it. So those are actions that you can take at your own house. Um, and if you are eligible um, for Rain Ready Ottawa rebates, it's, it's really worth it to uh, apply to our program because there's $5,000 on the line. Um, and to get eligible for those, you need to be in the priority zone, but then you need to take one of three now options. Uh, beginning, you could use a fusion uh, landscape professional. And so these folks, they have the knowledge and the expertise. Um, so if they do the work on your behalf, you're eligible as long as you're in the geographic zone. And then you could get a home assessment, which was in part responsible for causing the backlog in the home assessment program. But now we're introducing this third way, which is an e-learning program. Um, I'm really excited about it. It's going to be free rainwater courses that you're going to be able to do on your own time in a self-guided way. Um, we're going to offer four courses. One's going to be an intro and overview, uh, a little bit like this uh, presentation. But you know, why does stormwater matter? What can you do in your area, um, and how to apply? It'll give you all that those instructions, and then the three priority actions that I talked about: downspout redirection, rain gardens, and soakaway. So if you did say you wanted to uh, do some downspout redirection towards a rain garden to get those rebates you'd have to take those uh, first three courses and then you'd apply to our program. I usually approve applications 
in about 24 hours. I can get back to people really quickly. Um, and then, you know, you're free to start your work. You can do it um, at your own speed. Um, typically, we say you, you've got a year to, to implement the, the project. Um, and then after that year, once you're done, you come back and there's another uh, online form that's a claim form. Uh, and then similarly, we, we act fast to try to get uh, rebate checks out to residents within about two weeks. So we've tried to make this program user friendly for residents out there. Um, but uh, I think there's a lot of great resources. I think the e-learning program is going to be one of them. Um, and there is a, a sign up link if you want to be alerted for when the e-learning program launches. And it's at our website, which is listed here. It's ottawa.ca slash rain. Uh, my email address is rain at ottawa.ca and that's my extension. Um, and we have social media. So I think you should follow us on social media. In fact, on our Instagram, we have a couple of sort of how-to videos. One's a video of me making my rain garden. So it's, it's a little bit goofy, but I think it runs through some of the steps and, uh, and how to do it if you want to do this on your own property. So um, I think with that, I'll, I'll leave it there, Counselor. And uh, I'm happy to take questions about anything to do with the program, anything to do with um, you know, our, our program and, and, and how it impacts the city. Oh, thank you very much, Simon. Um, it's so exciting and it looks so beautiful and it's so good for our, for our environment. Um, so um, there's two choices for um, asking questions. You can put it in the chat if you prefer, or you can raise your hand so we know who's asking a question and we can and uh, just uh, open up your mic. If anybody would like to ask a question about their property and uh, would this suit it? Um, I think I got an alert here. Tanith has a raised hand. Go ahead, Tanith. If I'm saying Hi there. your name correctly, I hope. Yeah, no, it's Tanis, you're right. Um, my, so my question is about when I heard the way that you were describing things, I just wanna make sure that I'm understanding the process accurately. So it sounds as though if I'm, if I'm correct, there's the three courses, we have to take those first, then we submit an application and only once we're approved, can we start work, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So it's not, a, not retroactive in any way. So we do an application. And then you can schedule the work whenever works for you. Okay. All right. And so is then the requirement that the work be completed? Uh, so if I were to apply uh, early this summer, for example, does is there a time limit for which we have to uh, complete the work within uh, to be eligible to for the rebate? Or how does that work? Um, there is. We start with uh, giving 12 months. So that's that, that's plenty of time, hopefully. Um, but I know that things come up and you don't get to it one season and then, you know, six months of those are not, <laughs> you're not able to install a rain garden in six months of the year here. So right. um, we understand that. Um, we would just ask that you ask for a little more time and, and we'll grant extensions, no problem. It's, okay, it's cause... more meant just to get people going on their projects to make sure that, uh, you know, we're not reserving uh, rebate funds to support some of that work. That's never going to happen. Just to make sure that uh, we can spread this program to as many residents as possible. Fair. So um, just looking at the way things have gone for you guys, it looks like it's it's you've got great uptake. It looks like there's a lot of people who are super interested. Um, if we were to sort of fast forward that, I'm looking, you guys have got your all of your applications for or your assessment scheduling is fully complete for 2022. Um, I'm just looking at that timeline and getting a little bit worried because I'm thinking you're right with the six months where we can't do work. Um, how does that all like I'm just worried you guys may be oversubscribed and un under resourced to <laughs> finish everything, but I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Yeah, no, I appreciate the concern. Um, as soon as there's an application and I can see, so, so say you have a project and it's gonna be, uh, well, I guess I'm drawing. That's okay. I'm uh, sorry. Beautiful. Um, it's beautiful. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, 
So say I, I, we approve you for a project that's fifteen hundred dollars. We sort of set that aside, and we, okay. you know, we'll come back to you, make sure you're gonna install it before we promise that out to another uh, resident. Um, and we've got lots of rebate money, so I would encourage everyone to uh, apply to this. And awesome. um, yeah, yeah, we're 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 not running out just yet. We're a three-year pilot, so we're in year two. So we've got a whole another year to go. I'm hoping yeah. that this year is a is a big year when we when we do approve out a lot of our uh, rebate funds. Right. To give people One last thing. Time to to install. Right. I don't want to monopolize the conversation, but I did have one last question, and that was more about um, purchasing materials. Is it possible for you guys to add a spot on your website where you uh, identify the places where uh, that are carrying the materials that you're advocating for for people to use? Um, when I was on the website the other day, I, I was looking for something like that, and I didn't quite see that. I, I appreciate the concerns there for sure. Um, I, I guess there's a city of Ottawa policy that we, we don't recommend specific uh places fair enough um, okay it's a bit it's a big frustration because i know that it's difficult for people to find resources um for where to buy things a lot of the materials can be got at any home center okay Depot, rona etc um, then some of the more specialized products like things to build soak away pits like those um, that's what I was thinking about specifically. Yeah. We we built a French drain and we did everything on our own and yeah. created everything that we needed. But to could that I was looking at those those crates that are there and thinking, oh, that might be a kind of a neat idea. I appreciate that. And and one tip for those things, I, I've seen a lot of them sold by uh, retailers who do ponds. So they're oh, okay. actually because they're holding water, and then people who want fountains or whatever, they're holding the water in those you know. So pond retailers can be helpful okay. and just Googling um, uh, with the word Canada in it to make sure that you're getting results that you can get shipped to your house or buy Great. somewhere. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you for your question. Thank you, Tanya. Um, there's a couple of questions in chat, um, one from Linda. Um, if I don't uh, want to do it myself, do I have to hire a fusion landscape professional or can I hire anyone if I have done the course or is it the contractor that has to have the, done the course? So um, if you hire a fusion landscape professional, nobody needs to do the courses because they've already got that training and experience. If you want to do it yourself, you've got to do the courses, um, only the ones relevant to the to the project elements you'd like to input. Um, if you do the course, we will approve you and you can hire a contractor to uh, you know, do the digging for you and, and implement the project. But um, there is checks after to make sure you've done it correctly. So they do have to adhere to the project requirements that are all laid out in the application process. So um, it's a bit of a yes and, but I think um, in the middle of that comment was exactly the requirement. So you can use um, uh, a contractor of your choice or a neighborhood teenager, but you are responsible to make sure that it's done correctly and according to the you know specs that we have for the program. Because a, a, a rain garden is a real thing, and it's a, it is a technical piece of infrastructure, I guess. It's got to be done correctly, but... Um, uh, you know, it's far from rocket science and, and, and people can do this. So we, uh, we trust people to do it correctly, provided they've taken the course. Great. Thank you. Um, Bruce is asking, um, when do you have to apply to take advantage of the program? I applied early last year and was too late. Oh, um, yes. So uh, you might be referring to the home assessment program. Um, which did fill up. And frankly, we had a waiting list almost from the first week. So we underestimated the interest in that. Um, so we had to pivot to the e-learning um, program. Uh, but there, the applications for rebates um, come on a rolling basis and there's lots of room in the program. Uh, so we encourage people to apply through that. Um, I understand that the uh, the home assessment program was a bit of a bottleneck 
But once we release the e-learning program, uh, that will sort of um, allow people to become eligible for rebates um, in a much quicker manner. Okay, so if you, you, you don't have to worry about it, if you can just take the um, courses online and uh, That's correct. show the proof. Okay. And is, did that answer your questions, uh, Linda, Bruce, if you had any, is that okay? Yep. All right, good, thank you. All right, um, I can't see hands up, but um, any other questions? Um, and, uh, I'm just going to ask how many of these uh, programs have you done, the, these, these sessions, Simon? Presentations like this one to the yeah. community group? Um, we did one in, in McKellar Park as because uh, I think yes. you uh, attended that. Um, I've done a handful of other ones. Um, not, not as many as I'd like to do because I'd like to uh, spread the word about the program um, and get as many people involved as possible. But um, these are really helpful because people get to ask questions. And um, frankly, I take a lot of uh, time to answer people's questions. So I appreciate them by email, by phone, however people want to get in contact with me, even social media. Um, I, I'm always commenting on people's project ideas and this, that, and the other thing. So I'm always happy to um, chat about rainwater projects or the program and, and clarify any questions. The, the website's full of information. There's an applicant guide and things like that as well. So, Excellent. Yeah. Um, Linda has a question and then I'll go to Mel. Um, would be interested in permeable driveway, but not by the side of 100 plus year old home. Would that work if, if part is permeable, part is not? Interesting. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, but maybe I'm guessing the concern is that it's going to drive water down and then it'll come in the basement, maybe. Um, and that is a concern. But what you can do is lay down a membrane um, that goes out a little ways. So it sort of drives the water sideways underneath. Um, so there are um, ways to mitigate that. Typically, if it's just rain falling directly onto a surface, that's not going to cause even a wet basement. It's when the runoff is concentrated. So it's the run runoff from all of your roof draining to a small patch right beside your house. So less of a concern if it's if there's no concentration of the runoff, if it's just the rain. Um, but I appreciate the concern. Um, the people who install this stuff, they they know their stuff. And if you hire a fusion landscape professional which you would have to, to get a rebate um, for permeable pavement, then um, you can ask some questions like that and, and that's perfectly valid. Great, thanks Linda. Uh, Mel? Yeah, I was just wondering, is the rebate like 100% of the cost you spend or is it a percentage? That, that's a great question. And, and they're a little bit hard to calculate. They're, they're all different. So for, Downspout redirections, it's 75% of the cost of the, in the whatever you have, receipts, invoices. Um, for rain gardens, it's based on the square footage, let's say, of the final rain garden. And then it has to be sized properly for the amount of runoff that it's receiving. So um, it's basically for the square footage. The benefit of that is that you don't have to have receipts. You don't have to go through all that rigmarole. It's just what the end size of your garden is, and then we issue the, the rebate. Soakaway pits are similar, um, but it's based on the, the area that generates the runoff, which is typically a roof. Um, and then for permeable pavements, it's again the final installed area, and it's um, per, per square foot. So it's about $5 a square foot or $50 per square meter. Okay, so like if you had, um, say, uh, the garden for the, like the front and the back of your house, then it would just be like the combined square footage. That's exactly right. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay, 
Thanks, Mel. Tanya? Yeah, um, I that question just poked another one that I had sort of brewing in the back of my head and I completely forgot about. And it was more about are there resources for rain garden development? So ideas for how you might do it that you guys can point to, um, less so about the supplies, but more so about um, sort of the idea generators and things you might want to consider or how to do it, the how to part rather than just the video, but something that I can hold in my hand while I'm in my backyard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the e-learning courses are going to be useful for that. There are going to be some, some ideas. Um, this is a guide that I bought. It's a rain garden and maybe I could uh, get in touch about the, I, I'm not sure. It's called the blue thumb guide to rain gardens. Okay. And there's a number of rain gardens out there. Uh, guides like that out there. This one is great. It's got a whole bunch of, uh, you know, planting ideas about, you know, what's your garden going to have, looks like that. Okay. Plant yeah. recommendations. We don't have enough space in our e-learning program to make it quite as uh, complete as them. But <laughs> right. we've, I've, uh, I've used this as inspiration, let's say. So yeah. we do mention some great plants. Um, and the folks at Fletcher Wildlife Gardens, they gave me a list of, you know, the five apocalypse proof plants that can really do well in our climate. So um, those that will they be can part... do well, but not take over the rest of my yard. Those are yes, the exactly. two criteria that I have to <laughs> maneuver between, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So okay. these, um, yeah, the e-learning course related to rain gardens will have lots of hopefully inspiration. Perfect. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. Great. For permeable, is it usually patios or driveways? It can be either. Uh, we, we do either and we've, we've, um, we've approved projects for both um, and pathways. Um, we had some, uh, some residents who wanted a pathway that would never be slippery. And because some of these products, they infiltrate the water, no water sits on them. They don't get icy. So that was an accessibility issue that they wanted to have this uh, um, specific permeable uh, path. So yeah, we do it all as long as it's uh, taking out some permeable or impermeable space and replacing it with permeable, that's great. Okay, well, that's great. Um, I don't see any other hands. I don't see anything else in the chat, um, but don't worry, you've got Simon's email. So you can still continue to ask questions if you think, ah, oh, I just remembered something I wanted to ask. It's okay. Anyway, this is all good stuff for the environment. Um, as Simon was pointing out, this has an effect on our rivers um, when we don't send water because of, of, of impermeable surfaces that send that water. And, I'm, and I live near the river and I see it shooting out. In fact, we have to put up signs saying danger because it shoots out really fast because it's held back. Um, and um, we want less of that. We want less and less and less. And, and making your garden looking nice is actually the way to do it. It's a kind of win-win. So really happy that you took the time, everyone, to come out tonight uh, to learn more about it. And please continue to learn. and. Um, um, I, I am glad the programs are filling up and I want more of these programs. So I, I think we have to push for that as a city. Um, maybe we'll have to um, uh, clone Simon, to, you know, so he can do more of this, but uh, whatever it takes. So thank you very much for having a, a good evening and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. It's still light out. This is amazing. <laughs> Take care. Thanks, Simon, so much. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, and I just noticed if Jay is still around. Jay had a question about rain barrels. Rain barrels are not an eligible measure, but they are good, good, good. And everyone should have two or more because my one fills up too quickly. Um, and so it's always spilling over. So having two is great. And there are community groups that fundraise based on rain barrel sales. And you can yeah. find those at rainbarrel.ca and that's the best place to get the barrels it's your lowest price supports the community and does good so that's my recommendation for that nice way to end it thank you so exactly. much exactly
Okay, right. thank you very much, Councillor, and thank you, Connie, for uh, all the administration, and thanks everyone for joining. Take care.